This is a short extract uh, from chapter 11 of the full Gregory. After dinner, John took his jacket off the hook by the back door. If you don't mind, love, I think I'll take a stroll down to see Chris at the finger post. Ellen didn't mind at all, as she was perfectly happy with her own company. Now, off you go. It'll do you the world of good to get out of the house for an hour. Chris, Chris Fielding, wasn't a registered beer seller, but this wasn't a problem since his front room had become the favourite watering hole of James Harding, J.P. Whenever he felt the need to escape the constant nagging of Mrs. Harding, if only for a couple of hours. In the past, the J.P. had tried escaping to the garden shed, but that hadn't worked. For as long as she knew where he was, there was to be no privacy. In fact, the only time he found some semblance of peace was when he was sitting on the magistrate's bench. That is, until he discovered Fielding's front room. There he could be sure he wouldn't be found, and after a few glasses of the local Sumner's ales, he would always return home in high spirits, which at least was a good news for any unfortunates due to appear before the magistrates the following morning. Naturally, Mr. Harding would avoid being seen in any public drinking establishments, and certainly none of the multitude of beer sellers whose customers will more often than not attract the attention of the local constabulary and therefore be subject to his judgment in court. It was about half past seven by the time John knocked on the door of number four, and after a minute or so, Chris opened the door. Oh, hello, John. Come on in. Mr. Harding is here. Constable Machin was here earlier, but the sergeant came and took him off. Had to be something urgent, but they didn't say. I collected a new ale from Sumner's this morning, fit to blow your head off, according to Brewer Rawcliffe. Here, yeah, try a glass on me. We've already had a couple. James Harding was sat on the sofa with a half-empty glass of the dark ale. So John sat opposite in a comfortable armchair. And when they were sitting down, the height difference wasn't so noticeable. Both Chris and John were no more than five feet six and stocky, while the JP was very tall and thin. Pretty well everyone in Aspel had commented on the height contrast when Mrs. Harding performed the opening of the annual St. Elizabeth's Garden Fate. She was barely five feet, unlike a husband who was well over six feet tall. On such public occasions, she maintained a permanent air of aloofness, never smiled, and when introduced to anyone, always adopted a look of distaste. Mrs. Eliza Harding was definitely not from Lancashire. You know John Gregory? asked Chris. Mr. Harding shook hands with John. He said, I do remember. How are you? I'm Mrs. Gregory? Fine, thanks. And Mrs. Harding, I hope. John's question went unanswered. For the next couple of hours they drank the new Sumner's best, smoked their pipes and discussed the prospects for Bolton Wanderers through to the end of the season, especially as James Harding had recently been appointed director. The ale went down a treat and John must have had four or five glasses which was much more than he usually had. He was feeling quite lightheaded and decided it was time he went home checked his time, the time by his pocket watch. My God, it's half past nine already. Well, much as I like your company, gentlemen, I've got to go now. How much do I owe you, Chris? A shilling will cover it, John. Anyway, it's been good to see you. John handed over his shilling, shook hands with the magistrate, then Chris saw him out of the front door and back onto Scott Lane. The walk from the finger post back up Stanley Road gave him time to clear his head. And despite the chilly feel in the air, John felt good. As always, Ellen had been right. It had done him the world of good. It was a particularly dark night, with no street lighting. It was difficult to see much ahead. But as he got much nearer to home, John was surprised to see a bicycle he recognised propped up against the lower step. But what on earth would bring P.C. Machin to 26 Stanley Road?